Get behind me! I don't know what that proved, but it felt cool. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we have a concealed carry gun that is slowly climbing to the top of my list, the Smith & Wesson Equalizer. Make sure I get a five-star rating, Junior. This little concealed carry gun is packed full of features that I think bring some of the best value to market you could ask for. First of all, it says Equalizer huge across the slide. Justice. Kidding. The trigger is always important on a gun, and I think this has one of the best triggers out of the box for a concealed carry gun. It's internally hammer fired, so you're gonna get that nice crisp wall, that break. Next thing, we've got a full-size pick rail up front, so you can put your normal lights that you would accommodate in the front of this. You don't have to get like one of the TLR series smaller lights. It comes optic cut. Um, it's got a little bit of texture on the grip, not too aggressive, so you can still carry. And it also comes with everything right here. You get three magazines, you get an 11 round, a 13 round, and a 15 round magazine with the Shield Plus mags. And it also comes with the uh, Magula, Magula? Abula, made in Israel. All of this right here is like $430. Three mags, a loader, and the gun, not the hollow sun. That's not part of it. Super great value. It's super concealable. And with the ex pinky extension, I think this gun fits your hand quite well. I'm used to the M&P grip angle, so this feels right at home. Um, and honestly, the internal hammer fire trigger reminds me of the break of the Apex Flat Face Enhance on the M&P 2.0. Oh yeah, we've got the Tier 1 T1M holster, I think is what it's called. I'm not sure, but boop. Boop. Just like that, super concealable, almost zero printing. Let's go zero this gun. Guys, make sure you're engaging with the channel. If you think this is the worst gun on the market, comment down below and I'll fight you in the comments. I don't know why, this was like the most hated gun I had on my Instagram page. Uh, when I posted it, they're like, wow, how much is Smith & Wesson paying you? Literally nothing. I would love for them to pay me though. I think there's gotta be room and Jerry needs like a, so. Let's shoot this thing. Let's get it zeroed in the head box on the right target and see where it's at. All right, let's go check that group. Don't mind these three up top here, but this is what we just did, this little U-shaped smiley face. Um, I'm dancing around a little bit. I think this is just me learning the trigger more than anything else. And we're just gonna send it with this zero. All right, now we're gonna try some real defensive ammo. Shout out to Superville Ammunition. They sent this out to us just to try out uh, because I told them I was gonna be doing some concealed carry videos. So this is 90 grain plus P. These are going 1500 feet per second. They look interesting. Look at the size of that cavity in there. Um, I wish we could shoot something other than cardboard and steel at Pima Pistol Club, but they don't allow us to. I think we're just gonna rip some plate racks. We're gonna see how much snap this has. I'm gonna think this has more kick than uh, this NATO Spec 124 that we've been shooting. Cause that's at about 1200 to 1250 at a 124. So we're adding a couple hundred feet per second, but it is a you know lighter round. I, I honestly think this is more controllable than the 124s. This feels refreshingly nice. These things are screaming out of here. There's a slight point of impact shift, uh, but honestly, I think light around higher feet per second is what I'd want to do out of this little Johnny because it just, the recoil impulse just feels that, that much better, so. Shout out to Superville. Thank you for letting us shoot some of it for the review. Let's see how the uh, the blue bullets feel in this bad boy real quick. As you can see, it's very controllable though. I do notice that the, uh, the trigger reset 
I'm pulling for that trigger quite a lot. Comparatively to what I'm used to, right? So what I just did there is I did like a half set because that's about as much as I pull with the apex trigger. So we're gonna tape up the target. We're gonna get some rounds and we're gonna start running some drills and checking out the times. All right, first things first, we're gonna shoot a little build drill. Oof, took me a second to find that dot there. The grip angle is a little different. That was a 275, that was my slowest build drill today. But yeah, that first shot was a 173. Let's just move up to the next target. Wow, okay. There, I gotta put a lot more input on this gun. That was a 248. Now, just to give you some context, I just got done shooting the Lago Arms Alien, and this is like a world of difference, but let's take a look at these hits off the bat. So, I'm favoring low, and I'm watching my dot just track, so I gotta figure out what type of pressure I need to put on the gun. So we're gonna rip some doubles next, just to get a feel for it. All this being said, if I just shot a dude, he's gonna have a bad day. All right, we're gonna do some doubles. Okay, that was a little bit better. I got one more maggle to rip a little bit more. I'm starting to understand where I need to hold on to this thing. Oh, wow. So one thing that's interesting is I'm focusing a lot more on my middle finger and my ring finger on my strong hand to really lock this gun into place uh, when usually I'm using my pinky and my ring finger on a full-sized gun so just adjusting that pressure to the gun is a, it's very important that's why i recommend people shoot like this might be crazy but shoot like 2,000 rounds through a gun before you actually carry it because i don't think you're going to fully understand how that gun shoots let's tape the target i'll keep talking i've taken people out to train before they've gone to a gun shop purchased a gun purchased ammo and a holster and they just expect that they're gonna be able to hit the target, just like that. When they have no idea how to hold the gun, they have no idea how loud it's gonna be or what happens afterwards. I had somebody who would close their eyes when they would pull the trigger. They would literally go, ah, every time because they were worried that gas was going to get in their eyes. But the other thing is you don't know what you don't know. So um, we got her shooting much faster. We got her down to like a two and a half second draw by the end of the day. But again, shooting these guns is going to do you a favor because you'll understand how it works, how it recoils, and you'll start understanding what input you need to put in the gun to have successful hits, which is why we're gonna try to shoot like 500 rounds out of this gun and we only have three mags. Smith, why didn't you send me more mags with this gun? So the magazines, you can get all the way up till your last round before there's some, some straining, which is probably why they included the loader with it. Uh, but as you shoot mags, they'll break in a lot more. Keeping, keeping bullets in magazines is fine. It doesn't wear out your springs. What wears out your springs is the constant expanding and contracting of the spring. So that is a dirty old myth that if you keep them stored, your springs will go bad. They'll actually be better than the mags you normally practice with. First reloads on the gun ever. I was um, not really sure what to expect. It definitely took a little bit of extra force of getting this magazine in there with a full 15 rounds, but I bet now that we have a little bit less, it'll be even easier. Easy, dude. This is a very, very easy carry gun to reload. Um, at least with the larger mag. And this is probably what I'd be loading to. Um, this is the 15 round mag. So um, having this in your gun, another misconception about carry guns. You're probably printing from your optic or the, the grip. If I really stick my stomach out. But these are my recreation clothes. Can you picture if that's how, hey, are you gonna finish your mayonnaise? 
having a smaller magazine in your gun is actually gonna help you with printing, which is why I moved away from using the 140 mags in my full-size gun. But even just adjusting it on my body, I mean, like this gun just disappears. It's so small, it's so nice. So um, let's, uh, let's work a little retention action. Whoa, do you see that slide? I don't exactly know what happened, but maybe the camera can help us replay that. It like, I don't know if that took a second to get into battery or what. We still got the shot off and we got an alpha, but we'll play that back. Two words, plate rack, okay? Let's see what this little dude can do on the plate rack, all right? My little buddy. My buddy, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy. Wherever I go, he goes, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy. What, what do you think the time's gonna be? Two, what? No, oh, keep going. Uh, 250. 250, all right. Two seventy-eight. I was really hoping it was gonna be two fifty. Dude, I, I was my second one was gonna be two eighty-five. Really? I thought I, that might be offensive. Why? I felt like you might think that's slow. I watched you do like a one eighty today. <laughs> I, uh, that is true, Jerry. You better watch out. But no, uh, I, in my head I was thinking like sub three was gonna be good. Should have enough. We'll run it again. Two sixty four, getting close to that two fifty. We're gonna do one more, and I think I get those splits a little bit faster, especially if I put this larger grip module magazine on. Damn, dude, the two ninety one with one extra. We're learning the trigger as we go, which is why we're out here. We're kind of just like exploring. Oh shit, get behind me. Oh, you know what? By the time I got to that last plate, I guarantee he would have been running because I just caught five of his friends. But little Susie needs to play a little sports, a little thing. We'll head back into the shade and we'll get some final thoughts on this gun. We shot just over 500 rounds on this gun today and it gets hot. It's still pretty warm to the touch and we haven't shot in a few minutes, uh, but it, it started getting hot real fast and I could feel it, especially just poking out of this holster. This is what I was feeling right here in my loins. This is a solid gun, especially for the price point. Again, you have a nice trigger, it's internal hammer fired. You have an optics cut with the K-size, K-series optics. So I literally took this hollow sun out of the box, screwed it right down, no problems. We have full-size pick rail so we can go with a compact Picatinny light. Or you can even put your Surefire X300 on it if you're a weirdo. You get three mags, 11, 13, and 15, and a, a, a mag loader as well. So Denzel would be proud of this gun. I'm definitely gonna throw this into the rotation for some of my lighter weight outfits and carries where a full-size gun might not work. This is also the perfect size for a fanny pack. So if you're a big fanny pack carrier, I'd consider it guys. It's not just the 365 or the Glock 43, but this equalizer is up there for carry. I think Smith & Wesson did an excellent job on this gun. And of course, one last reminder, if you wanna support the channel, grab a belt. If you've lasted this long in the video, I appreciate you and you are special in my heart. That's it, we'll catch you guys later.